Have you deployed your Terraform configuration using Terraform Cloud and now you wanna migrate off of it? Well, this video is for you. What's up everybody, it's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how you can migrate off of Terraform Cloud. I know that sounds strange because Terraform Cloud's pretty cool, has a lot of nice features, it's got a whole free tier, but hey, sometimes it's not a great fit. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> I, got, I gotta leave, I gotta get off of Terraform Cloud. So we're gonna cover how you do that in this video. Before I get into that, two quick things. Number one, I have a brand new course on Pluralsight. It's all about getting started with Terraform Cloud. So it sort of assumes you're already familiar with Terraform itself, the open source version, but how do you adopt Terraform Cloud? That's what I get into in the course. It's pretty extensive. I think you'll really enjoy it. So check that out. Link is down in the description. And also, uh, big news, the Vault Operator exam is now live. So if you're interested in getting certified as a HashiCorp Vault Administrator, definitely check it out. Again, that link is down in the description. Okay, so let's get into Terraform Cloud and migrating off of it. Before we talk about migrating off of Terraform Cloud, we should probably talk about what Terraform Cloud is actually storing that you need to migrate. And there's a few things there. Terraform Cloud allows you to store your state data in their secure remote location. So that's very important. Your state data is kind of a thing you're gonna to wanna to move with you because that is the mapping between your Terraform configuration and the target environment that you're managing with Terraform. So that has to go. Another thing that Terraform Cloud does is it provides hosted runners to run your Terraform operations, your plans and your applies. That's something you can easily move to a different machine, whether you're gonna run that locally or use a service like GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps Pipelines, whatever it is, you're gonna need somewhere to run Terraform, but we're not so worried about that. And then the last thing is you can store variables inside of a workspace in Terraform Cloud. You're going to need to move those variable values where it, somewhere else, whether it's gonna be in a file or some sort of data store, whatever it's gonna be, you're gonna to need to move that. Now the trickiest of all of those is moving the Terraform state data. So that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. Now, typically migrating your state data is normally a very simple operation. You update the configuration with a different backend and you run Terraform in it and Terraform goes, oh, you're moving your state data from here to here? No problem, it does it. But when you try to do that with Terraform Cloud, it just, well, it doesn't work out. So let's go over to the demonstration environment, take a look at how Terraform Cloud is configured both locally on your workstation and also up in the Terraform Cloud portal. And then we'll see what happens when you try to migrate that state data down to the local backend. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio Code. If you want to follow along with any of this, you can go to my GitHub repository for Terraform Tuesdays. The link is down in the description and you can follow along. The folder we're working in here is 2022-0301 because that's when I wrote this demonstration. And if we expand there, we've got two directories. One is the remote setup. If you're following along, you need to deploy what's in the remote setup first. And then the main config is the configuration we're actually deploying out using Terraform Cloud. Now I've already gone through the process of setting all of this up. If you're gonna follow along, just look at the readme and it takes you through the whole process of setting it up in your environment. Okay, so with that in mind, what is in this main config? Well, it's deploying an Azure app service, but Honestly, that's not the really important part. The important part is in this terraform.tf file because this has a cloud block in it that defines the backend Terraform is going to use. So we'll get into that more in a moment, but as you can see, I'm using the organization Ned in the cloud and the workspace TFC migration test. If we look in the folder structure for main underscore config, there's this dot terraform hidden directory. And if we expand that hidden directory, there's two important files I want to point out. The first one is environment. The environment file is used by the local instance of Terraform to determine what the current 
works currently selected workspace is. So if you have multiple workspaces associated with a configuration, the environment file will tell Terraform which workspace you're currently working on. The other file in here is the terraform.tf state file. And this doesn't actually have your state data in it. It has a pointer to where Terraform can find that state data. So if we look at what's in there, we have a backend definition of type cloud, and it tells Terraform, you can go to the Terraform cloud organization net in the cloud, and the workspace is called TFC migration test. Now, if we had multiple workspaces, this would be a little bit different, but essentially this is how Terraform finds the state data that's stored up in Terraform Cloud. So these two files are important when we want to migrate off of Terraform Cloud. All right, getting back to this main.tf, no, I'm sorry, getting back to this terraform.tf file. I'm going to attempt to migrate to the local backend. And the easiest way to do that is to comment out the cloud block. So I'll go ahead and do that now and save the file. Now that that's commented out, when I run Terraform in it, because I don't have a backend defined, it's going to try to migrate me to the local backend. So let me just expand this view a little bit so you can see what the actual output is. It's going to say initializing the backend, the local backend, and it's going to say, oh, I can see that you used to be on Terraform Cloud because I can see that in the file terraform.tf state that you have in the .terraform folder but you took that out of your configuration. So now I'm gonna to try to migrate you to the local backend. And then it talks to Terraform Cloud and goes, oh, that's not implemented. You cannot migrate from Terraform Cloud to another backend using the Terraform executable. Go to this API link to do it. And if you actually go to the API link, it's not helpful in that regard. It'll tell you how to get state data from Terraform Cloud and inspect it, but it doesn't tell you how to actually do the migration. So before we do the migration, I wanna go over a few state data basics. So let's dig into that and then we can use that information to perform a migration. What is state data? State data is very simply the mapping of what's in your Terraform configuration to a given target environment. And there is one set of state data per workspace. Now, how do you configure where that state data is going to be stored? You use that by putting in your configuration either a backend block or a cloud block. If you're using Terraform Cloud, you use the cloud block. If you're using any other backend, whether that's S3, Azure RM, the local backend, you can define that with a backend block. If you don't have anything in your configuration defining a backend or cloud, then Terraform assumes you're going to use the local backend, which uses the working directory where your Terraform configuration is. And what it will do is for the default workspace, it's going to create a file called terraform.tf state in that working directory. When you're using the local backend, there's always going to be a default workspace. It's the workspace that exists before you create any other workspaces. And that's gonna have that terraform.tf state file. Now, if you're using the local backend and you create an additional workspace, Terraform is going to create a directory called terraform.tfstate.d in that working directory. And then each workspace will get its own subdirectory. And inside that subdirectory will be a terraform.tfstate file. That's how Terraform figures out which workspaces exist. It just looks at the subdirectories inside that terraform.tfstate.d directory. Okay. And lastly, the currently selected workspace goes in that environment file that we saw before. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense in terms of state basics. What's happening during a migration is that the state data is being pulled from one backend and being placed in another. Now Terraform Cloud doesn't support that. So what we need to do in order to properly migrate from Terraform Cloud to our local backend is mimic what Terraform expects to see locally and then make a copy of the current state data and place it in the proper folder structure. So let's go back to the demonstration environment and I will show you how you can mimic what Terraform is expecting to see. Looking at the Terraform Cloud UI in our workspace, it is called TFC Migration Test. And the state data is on the states tab 
it keeps a versioned list of all the state data versions we've had. I have two versions so far, and I can click on that and view the actual state data. So this is the information we want to pull down. There's actually a download button you can click to download a file, but we're gonna do it a slightly different way. Now let's go over to Visual Studio Code. What would Terraform expect to see if we're using the local backend? Well, I already talked through that a little bit. We're using a workspace called TFC Migration Test. So what we need to do is create a directory. And that directory is going to be terraform.tfstate.d. And then within that directory, we need to create a directory that has the same name as our workspace. So that's going to be TFC migration test. Now that we have that directory, we need to put our state data into that directory. And the way that we're going to do that is using a command called terraform state pull. If we run terraform state pull, <laughs> I unset the back end. So first let's undo what I did with the cloud configuration, save it and run terraform in it. To, to fix what I broke when we tested the migration. Okay, now we're back to using Terraform Cloud. And when I run Terraform state pull, it's going to pull that state data down and just send it to standard out. Now that's not very useful this way, but what we can do is then redirect that information and we can send it to Terraform state.d TFC workspace migration test. And the name of the file we wanna put it in is gonna be terraform.t F state. Okay, now we have our state data in that file. All right, we're, we're doing pretty good. What do we have to do next? Well, we have to remove the cloud block from our configuration, the thing that I just undid a second ago. So I'll add those comment blocks back in and save it. All right, so that's gone. Another thing that we have to do is in our .terraform directory, we have to delete this terraform.tf state because we're no longer using Terraform Cloud as our backend, we don't want Terraform to get confused about which backend we're using. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have the state data where we need it, and we've updated our configuration, the last thing to do is run Terraform in it again. And now it's gonna say initializing backend, no big deal. And then it says Terraform has been successfully initialized. So we successfully migrated from Terraform Cloud as a backend to the local backend. And if I run a Terraform plan, it should tell me that no changes are required because it's going to inspect the state data and the configuration and go, well, they're the same, no big deal here. Go ahead and make changes when you're ready. And I scooched things ahead a little bit because it takes a second for it to refresh. But as we can see, it says, no changes are necessary. Your infrastructure matches your configuration. So it was able to look at the state data and make that determination. No muss, no fuss. We've successfully done the migration. Now you might be wondering, that's great for the local backend. What if you want to migrate to a different remote backend? Because honestly, you were probably using a remote backend for a reason. And just because you don't want to use Terraform Cloud anymore, that doesn't mean you don't want to use any backend anymore. So let's talk about how you might migrate to a different backend and we'll use Azure RM as an example. The example we just looked at was migrating from Terraform Cloud to the local backend. But what if you wanted to use a different remote backend? I mean, after all, you were probably storing your state data remotely for a reason. So why not go with something like Azure RM? That's the example I'll use, but this is really applicable to any of the backends. The basic process is the same. Now, what does Azure RM do as a backend? Well, it uses an Azure storage account and it requires some information as input. It requires the resource group that the storage account is in, the name of the storage account itself. It needs a container where it's going to store the blobs that are your state data. And then it needs the actual state data stored in that container in a blob object. So that's what we need to represent to Terraform in Azure. Now, one thing to understand about the way that Azure deals with workspaces is when you have a workspace with Azure RM, it takes the key, the key is the value it uses to name the blob. In the case we have here, if we look at our backend configuration that's quoted out, the key is set to web app. So it would create a blob called web app in the storage account container. 
but if you had a workspace, it would be web app and then it would tack on env for environment colon and the name of the workspace. So when you create that state data blob that you wanna upload, you just have to name it properly. The rest of the process would be the same. You set up that container and you make sure everything's configured properly. You use Terraform state pull to pull the information down to a local file and then use something like the Azure CLI to push it up as a blob to Azure storage update your configuration, delete that terraform.tf state file, and you're good to go. So that is how you would do it with Azure. And if you wanna go through that, I included that as part of the demonstration and the walkthrough, so you can see how it would work with Azure RM. And it's really applicable to any other backend that's out there. You just have to understand how that backend functions. There is another option here that's a little bit more simple, and it's the reason I started with the local backend to begin with. You can simply migrate to the local backend. And then when you're done that, you can do a second migration to whatever other backend you want. And because that migration is supported by Terraform, all you have to do is update the backend and run Terraform in it and you're good to go. So that might be a little simpler than trying to figure out exactly how each backend needs to be structured <laughs> for Terraform. So that's, that's your easy out is to do a two-step migration with the local backend as an intermediary. In this video, we covered how to migrate your state data off of Terraform Cloud and onto either the local backend or more generally any backend, as long as you can mimic the process. Now, there's a pretty good chance eventually HashiCorp is going to fix this. They're going to support direct migration, but I'm gonna say they're probably not in a hurry to do that. After all, they kind of want you to stay on Terraform Cloud. <laughs> so they might get around to it. In the meantime, if you need to do this migration, I have included a link to a blog post that I wrote that covers the migration process. So you can go to that if you need a quick refresher and the actual commands to do it. More generally, I think it's just good to understand how Terraform manages state data, especially if you're in charge of managing Terraform, you're gonna wanna know that kind of thing. That's gonna do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, you know, subscribe, like, share, do all of those things. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Wow, hey, another video about Terraform Cloud. I guess that's not terribly surprising. I've been using Terraform Cloud a lot. And actually, this was a question that came up when I was doing a live training recently. And I was like, I don't know the answer. Let me figure that out. So I figured it out and, and the video was born. If you've enjoyed this video, I wanna include a link to another video that I did on the uh, Microsoft DevOps Labs channel with April Edwards about using Terraform and GitHub actions to validate your infrastructure's code. So I'll include that bit somewhere around here. <laughs> Enjoy that. And also, uh, guess what? I'm wearing taco socks today. Check this out. Woo! Taco socks. Bye.